I'm Great. Myself. Well, thank you. So this is part of our ongoing work on studying and comparing various segments of, of Bulgarian and Ukrainian lexicon and grammar using a parallel corpus that we have been developing. Why did we choose bread this time, uh, the topic of our interest? Why is bread important? Why is bread special? It is a central concept in Western civilization because bread and other bread-like products have been around for millennia, for, since time immemorial. So bread vocabulary is highly developed everywhere. But on the other hand, for many centuries, it has been developing separately so that uh, the words of different languages, the expressions don't match exactly. Uh, and this creates very complex and interesting relationships. Plus, uh, I'd point out that bread is a human product. It's produced by people and for people. So this semantic and lexical field is part of the anthropocentric image of the world and the anthropocentric vocabulary. The corpus that we use for this study, as well as a series of others, is uh, an ongoing project, as I said. Uh, it's composed of fiction, mostly novels, and some short stories as well. Its composition is not uh, so uh, central for this particular study, so I'm not going to dwell on it in detail. But anyhow, there are texts uh, which have been written originally in Bulgarian or in Ukrainian and translated into the other language. There are texts that have been written in a variety of other languages and translated into both Bulgarian and Ukrainian. In particular, the Bible forms a part of uh, the last edition of the corpus. And its total size, currently is uh, 10 million words in Ukrainian and predictably a little more in Bulgarian, 11 and a half. Uh, so 21 and a half million words in the two languages in total. What we did was, first of all, we collected the principal bread words in Bulgarian and in Ukrainian. Mm, so in Bulgarian, the main lexeme is chlap, and uh, we also count uh, the diminutives, uh, the hypocoristic chlebets, and the diminutive chlepche, which lives alive with its own and uh, the meaning of small bread or all. And the principal bread was in Ukrainian, the main lexeme chlib, and again the diminutive chlebets, uh, which is little bread, diminutive or hypocoristic, and the chlibina, which means a loaf of bread. So it's a name of uh, a single entity, a single mm -hmm. item. So these are the main uh, bread words, uh, so to say. So we can uh, make uh, a tally of how many times they appear, how many times each of them corresponds to a word of, uh, the, of, of the other language. Uh, again, a principal word, a derivative, or some other word. And so altogether, we found 1,634 enters of one word or the other. And uh, we made this table from which we can already make a few conclusions about how they behave. In particular, Bulgarian chlab is more readily used as a count noun, and Ukrainian chlib uh, is more likely to be a mass one. Mm -hmm. As a matter of fact, I'll make a short parenthetical remark here, uh, some, something interesting in the Bulgarian editions uh, of the gospel, you know, the famous story about the feeding of uh, thousands of people with five loaves of bread and two fishes, the Bulgarian texts tend to have Jesus asking, how many breads do you have? And the Ukrainian text, the question is, how much bread do you have? Mm -hmm. So this illustrates yes. uh, the point I was making. Uh, and it's more common for Bulgarian chlyab than for Ukrainian chlyab to correspond to a word with a different root. What those words are, we're going to see anon. For Bulgarian chlepche and Ukrainian chlibina, this is even more common. Talking about words of different roots, uh, well, at the next stage, we started seeking out other corresponding words, so words of the same lexical field, the same semantic field, but not cognate to, uh, to chlib and, and chlib. So we found the, the, uh, the occurrences where a word uh, uh, of, of this uh, set I was talking about corresponds to something else in the other language. The words we found this way formed the next layer and so on. Uh, we only chose words that denoted kinds of cooked dough, uh, baked, boiled, or fried, or their parts, products, subproducts, uh, but not just dough. 
not just flower, not just going, not just go. You had to draw the line somewhere, although drawing the line was tricky sometimes. Um, it, 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 it had the tendency of becoming blurry. But words that meant piece uh, of anything were only included when it was clear from the context uh, that bread or another relevant substance was meant, usually mentioned in the same sentence. Eventually, we ended up with a big set of uh, 91 Bulgarian lexemes and 110 Ukrainian lexemes, words related to bread, meaning bread in some sense, or able to mean bread in some sense, and a total number of 3,240 word pairs. Mm, the vast majority of these words, uh, uh, they are in an appendix to our paper. I'm not going to talk uh, in much detail about this now, but anyhow, they denote baker's goods specified for shape, so elongated, round, crescent, size, grain, um, oats, rye, uh, occasionally other substances as well, presence of leaven, presence of a topping or filling, a taste, uh, sometimes savory or sweet, uh, or maybe unspecified for that, but uh, for, for something else in this sort. And the idea that the set of words had to be fully connected has uh, uh, the corollary that some words were not taken, although being semantically appropriate by their definitions. So, for example, the Bulgarian word agnolotti, well, agnolotti in Bulgarian uh, carried over from an Italian text, agnolotti. Uh, the word pelmeni, which again uh, appears in the translation from Russian, uh, um, but is used nowadays in Bulgarian also, Russian dumplings. Ukrainian pelmeni, these words were not taken because there was no connection from them to Hlyab uh, in any way uh, in the corpus. We could delineate a number of semantic categories in this. Uh, as I said, uh, there are words that denote bread, uh, words that denote uh, other items of various sorts, words that denote whole units of bread, so um, a loaf of bread or a cake of bread, as we say in English, or a piece of bread. Uh, and the piece of bread can be uh, a, a part that is being cut off, a part that has been uh, uh, torn off, uh, broken off, uh, something from the center, from, from the outside, uh, the crust, uh, whatever. Uh, or sometimes we find words that mean a piece of food uh, or of anything, but usually bread, uh, kind of English mouthful or slice. And finally, words that mean the piece of anything and that, and, that, and that simply can be applied to bread and sometimes are and often are in the corpus. Mm. And by comparing how many times these words appear and how many times they correspond to one another, again, we can uh, find uh, some interesting tendencies. You see the table here uh, and you see that Bulgarian has a greater fondness of the word chlap itself. And the terms for units and pieces of bread, big and small. So those of uh, in the audience who are speakers of Bulgarian know how often we find words like uh, filia, zalek, komat, uh, words that actually refer to uh, a piece of bread specifically. Ukrainian is not uh, uh, so fond of these particular words. Uh, it tends to use words for special kinds of baker's goods and also often uses general words for pieces of food uh, and words for a for, for piece of anything uh, in general. We can make a big table of correspondences uh, and to see how often uh, one Bulgarian lexeme corresponds to some Bul uh, Ukrainian lexeme out of these uh, lists. Uh, as I said, there's about a about hundred words in each, each language. So obviously a table hundred by hundred would be too big to fit on the slide here. But here's the upper left corner with the most frequent words. Um, so words for bread and words for sandwich. And then the others that follow tend to differ in Bulgarian. You find the word pitka, little cake in position number three, and then torta, which is a conditioner's cake, kind of a birthday cake. Uh, then we find slatkish, something sweet, parche, which is a general word for, for, for peace. In Ukrainian, we find tort, uh, a conditioner's cake in third position, then perich, a pie, korz, uh, which tend to mean, again, a, a cake, um, a flat thing, shmatok, a general I think, word for peace. You can see that uh, generally they tend to correspond to one another more or less. Uh, 
following their frequencies. So the most frequent words correspond to one another most often. And then the words for sandwich do the same. And then the tendency is kind of preserved, but there is a bit of uh, um, stray from, from time to time also. So as I said, we have a lot of data here, things about words corresponding to one another. What's going to happen if we put this in a net? If we try to draw a graph in which each Bulgarian and Ukrainian lexical unit has a node corresponding to it, and there is an edge drawn between them, if there is at least one match, uh, ignoring for the time being uh, the number of times they, th this match appears. So if, if it appears at least once in the corpus, we draw an edge. And we end up with, with uh, almost 400 edges, you know, 395 to be precise. If we draw the graph uh, so as to make it as balanced as possible, uh, so that uh, uh, in the center we want to put a word from which any other word can be reached with uh, as a short a path as possible, as few moves as possible, then a candidate for the center would be Bulgarian Pitka, bread roll, because from this word any other can be reached in five moves at most. And the greatest distance between two nodes is nine edges. And this is what the network looks like uh, eventually. As I said, Pitka is uh, at the very center. And we have uh, words uh, that are as far as possible in sense uh, located uh, at the periphery. So for example, at the very top, the two uh, words uh, that are you know, located in the highest position in the, in the diagram are marzipan and Bademovka, which is essentially the same thing in Bulgarian, uh, meaning something made of almonds. And at the left, uh, we have uh, uh, Ukrainian tortik, which is a small conditional cake, and the trubochka and batonchik, a pipe made of wafer. What is interesting is that uh, here in the, in the graph, uh, we can see groups of words with similar meanings located uh, uh, so to say, uh, geographically, geometrically close together. So I have outlined uh, the lower right corner, which is words for pieces. You know, those words uh, that uh, form separate semantic categories, as I said, uh, uh, they are located close together. Hmm. So from the position, the allocation of words in the graph, we can uh, tell something about how close their meanings are to one another according to our corpus. Uh, still, because this network is uh, rather hard to observe, uh, we can try to shorten it somewhat by only leaving some of the edges, uh, because uh, arguably some of the edges are the artifact of translation from third languages, and actually they connect words with substantially different meanings. So one way to uh, shorten the network is by taking only all those word pairs that appear in text found uh, where Bulgarian or Ukrainian is the original languages, language. Mm, this is somewhat less than one quarter of uh, the examples from the corpus. And uh, so what is left is uh, uh, about half of the lexemes, 141 edges. Mm, this gives us the graph on this page, uh, it is no longer all interconnected because we cut off some links that don't appear in the Bulgarian or Ukrainian sector of the corpus. So it's somewhat more observable. And uh, as you can see, again, in the lower right uh, uh, part of this area, we see the words uh, denoting pieces uh, grouped together. And there are some other parts of uh, the network also where words uh, close together are uh, located uh, in uh, uh, closely tied close in its sectors. A third way of uh, shortening the network, making it more observable, as I said, is excluding part of the correspondences by choosing them among the ones that are least uh, that um, uh, that are least well supported by corpus data. But doing so with the condition that if two words, word pairs share a word and one is more frequent than the other, then we may not drop the first and keep the second. So we really choose the corresponses that are best supported by corpus data out of the lot. So if we try 
to choose as few edges as we can while observing this condition, we end up with uh, a network with 251 edges. Again, Bulgarian Pitka, uh, right or all, located in the center, uh, seven edges away from the most distant nodes, which are Ukrainian Hostia and Ukrainian Krishka. Hostia is a host, uh, communion wafer, and Krishka means a crumb. And the greatest distance is 13 edges. Uh, so this is what it looks like. And it has the same uh, feature that we can select uh, parts of, the net of, of this network where words of uh, similar meanings are grouped together. So I'm not going to talk about in much detail about this. Uh, I want to mention the last uh, experiment that we ran uh, for this study. To relax the requirement that the edges from each node must be chosen among the most frequent ones and simply take as many edges as are needed to keep the system fully connected. Uh, so since we have 201 nodes in altogether, so that means 200 node, uh, edges are needed to connect them. The graph looks like a tree. It is not in fact a tree because the edges are not directed. So the reason we put uh, a node on top of the tree, uh, that's Bulgarian Pitka again, is not because uh, it is in some, in some uh, way uh, really at a top, uh, a root of a tree, but because it is kind of central. So from it, any other node can be reached in no more than 14 moves. Hmm. Another candidate would be Ukrainian Korj. And the largest distance in this tree is uh, 27 edges. And this tree has the feature that uh, semantically web well-formed subsets of uh, words of the two languages uh, can be identified as subtrees. Uh, so we have uh, one such subtree near the near the top, which includes Pitka, the word I mentioned, which is on the top, and a, new, a number of words denoting types of uh, bread by context by content near it. And then there is a big sector at the left, uh, the left hand side, uh, those are the pieces again. And a small sector in the left, uh, in the left half, uh, which is words for, uh, for various sandwiches, uh, not necessarily kinds of sandwiches, actually it's more like synonyms uh, in Ukrainian denoting sandwiches, so words like sandwich, butterbrot, uh, kanapka, uh, and so on, the um, hamburger for, for that matter, hamburger. And then there's another subtree in the right hand uh, part in the little lower than the types of bread by context. There's uh, words meaning various desserts. Um, so Bulgarian Slotkish is uh, at the top of, of this word and uh, confectioner products uh, located below it. Mm. So this is um, a particularly interesting graph that uh, we got as a result of, um, of uh, this study. What we would point out as valuable traits of the approach is that it was highly formalized. The sequence of actions is uh, precisely outlined and uh, carried out in an automatic way and can be applied to any field defined by a certain concept. Uh, so in a way it is universal. Uh, it reflects uh, both the generalized translation experience embodied in the parallel texts um, and uh, the fruits of lexicography embodied in the respective interpretative dictionaries of the two languages. Uh, it's objective because uh, being formal and being automat automatic uh, in the procedure uh, reduces the subjective component in the research. It is comprehensive uh, because uh, the multilinguality of the sources increases the diversity of detected entries, you know, the, parallel, uh, the, the presence of parallel translation from third languages also. And we can uh, build a network on the base of two languages for both languages simultaneously. Which is not to say that uh, there is not a lot of work to be done from this point on. There are many ways to further enrich the network, uh, embellish it and making it uh, more adequate for particular tasks. Uh, so one thing we can do is label every edge by the numeric value, which reflects its relevance. So the number of occurrences, but keep the edges in place. We can make the edges directed by having them point from the less frequent to the more frequent lexeme, which is often uh, going to make them correspond to uh, an, a kind of relation. We can correct the weight of, or the weight of an edge 
based on the number of sectors of tech or texts in which it is encountered, because sometimes we find uh, edges connecting lexemes that uh, we feel uh, should be, be interpreted as having different semantics. And we find that this is because in some particular text, uh, some particular translator made them correspond to one another. So if you want to reduce the weight of, uh, of this kind of phenomenon, we can introduce the correction I mentioned. And we can also add information from interpretative dictionaries and monolingual corpora, including dialect data, because uh, it, it is a fact that uh, dialects uh, include uh, a wealth of terminology that our corpus probably does not reflect, uh, but might, in fact, because dialect uh, uh, lexicon is, uh, of course, uh, available to translators, but they don't always uh, have uh, the incentive to use it. And uh, comparing coverage and combining results with similar networks uh, built by other deductive and inductive methods is uh, always uh, a potentially fruitful way of uh, increasing the and um, improving the information that we cover. So thank you for your attention and um, we're open to questions. Thank you very much for the interesting presentation. And uh, just to say that uh, there is one question uh, in YouTube uh, from um, Radovan Garabik. Uh, I will read it now. Uh, naive question, maybe I just missed it. Does the Ukrainian clip uh, also mean grain? And if it does, was it removed from the word pairings? Uh, yes, it does. Uh, it very much does so. And as a matter of fact, it is an important fact that Ukrainian chlib means grain much more often than Bulgarian chlap does, although Bulgarian chlap has this meaning also. It was removed from the word pairings for this particular experiment. Because we only wanted to compare words, as I said, for for baked uh, for bakers' products. But uh, in another study, we do plan to look at this as well. And so the, the the way the condition, the frequency, and so on. Uh, so uh, which, Bible translations? which Bible translations were used? I see. I'm being asked. Uh, uh, well, shall we say uh, the principal ones? Uh, uh, the um, Holy Synod's uh, translation into Bulgarian and Ivan Ohienko's translation into Ukrainian. Okay, there are also other Which questions. Are oh, there are a lot of questions. Uh, uh, yes. Did you map this? Uh, did you map them uh, in the WordNet to get the named relations? Not yet, but again, uh, this is something that we intend to do. Uh, it is uh, one of the things that I mentioned in the last slide as. Uh, part of the future paths. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yes, of course, we do uh, intend to do that. We just wanted to see, for this, but on this occasion, we want to see what information our corpus was going to give us. Uh, but yes, we intend to enrich the network uh, with sources, in, uh, including the WordNet. So there are two, there are two questions uh, in uh, YouTube. Um, no, actually, yeah. one is uh, so actually probably one question from Krasimira Petrova. Uh, would you suggest to change the translation of the line from God's Prayer, Chleb Nash Nasushni Dainit Mes, this is in Bulgarian, into another languages and cultures replacing with rice, corn? Um, <laughs> question Fish continues. and toad. The question <laughs> continues. <laughs> Obviously, in Ukrainian is Chleb, uh, is Karvam, is do you, uh, when it is another question, do you, do you a study proof the old proverb? Uh, what was last sentence, sorry? Did uh, do you study proof the, the old proverb? But if you want, we can address the first question first. <laughs> uh, well, uh, yes, it is, a, it, it is a known fact that different words are used in some languages for translating uh, our daily bread. Uh, uh, we, we've heard of fish. Uh, in some Inuit translations as well. Uh, 
and it is a fact, again, uh, something that we did not include in this particular study, but it is part of, uh, the, of, of, of the bigger project uh, on the studying bread in general, that bread can mean food uh, in well, it, have the, it has it can have the general meaning of food. It can have the general meaning of um, um, well, perpitani uh, in, in okay. uh, so uh, <laughs> I'm trying to uh, living in well, living in English in general. But anyhow, the things one eats, things one lives with. Uh, so we in, do intend to look at the frequency of this as well. Uh, obviously, we're being asked whether we have observations on other languages, in particular other Slavic languages, or not. On this occasion, I think Russian is going to be kind of similar to Ukrainian, but to what extent precisely remains to be seen. And yes, of course, it would be interesting to look at uh, other Slavic languages uh, as well. Mm. Or, for that matter, something that we can e do easily enough is uh, look at uh, what happens in uh, the languages that our translations were made from, because mm -hmm. we do have text translated from Polish, text translated from Russian. Uh, so, looking at those is uh, not an obvious next step that we can take, just to see how big the variety of bread words is in, in those languages. So I, I think you probably answered. Uh, so I have the uh, suspicion that they, this may be two different questions. But uh, so uh, in Ukrainian is "chleb uh, piskarom si chlebo." Do you study proof the old, proof the old proverb? Did you already answer this question? Piskarom si chlebo zarobatvish na chleb. Zarobljata na chleb. Yes, zarobljata na chleb does exist in Ukrainian also. Uh, and whether it is more frequent uh, uh, than Bulgarian is or not, uh, as I said, with a separate study. So metaphoric oh. meanings of the word yeah, yeah, yeah. Of, 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 of the word are, as I said, something we did not look at on this occasion. We only wanted literal uses, but metaphoric mm -hmm. meanings are well, a separate project, yeah, separate yeah, talk, yeah. sometime. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, so, uh, are there any more questions? Uh, for the presenter, maybe there is something in your in your chat. Maybe somebody wrote to you privately a question. Can you check? Um, I'm monitoring the chat. I think I answered what uh, uh, I think okay. I answered the things that I see here. And if there are any others, uh, well, I'm available. Yes, uh, I have uh, one very short question. So, um, can you? Um, um, just give examples of what kind of applications uh, that uh, your work can actually be useful for, like practical applications. Practical applications, you say? Yeah. Well, for one thing, it can be used uh, as a translator resource because it it, it is the, the nucleus, shall we say, of um, a lexical database. Uh, so we end up with a number of translators of, of, of translation pairs, uh, bilingual translation pairs, Bulgarian, Ukrainian, with the information on their frequency. Um, and perhaps uh, if we want, so are we still connected? Yes, yes, we can hear yeah, you. Okay. Okay, so my, my screen went blank, so I wonder what was going on. Uh, so we we can produce information on what uh, Ukrainian words, uh, a certain Bulgarian word has been found to correspond to and vice versa, which can be compared to the data in uh, a bilingual dictionary. Mm -hmm. And then we can discuss the reasons for the differences, uh, if any, uh, which there are going to be a number of, a number of times. Uh, so this is one possible direct practical use that uh, I can think of. Um, otherwise, uh, we're more thinking of uh, this providing information for further theoretical studies, so for example, in translations, translation studies. So if we find some kind of uh, uh, correspondence pair in uh, one text, uh, but not in others, then there may be some reason for that that we might want to look at uh, why that is, what prompted the translator to do something unusual in, in some particular occasion, and so on. So there's a number of questions that uh, this can provoke. Okay, thank you. Yeah, thank you and very thank much. You. Yeah, and thank you for the presentation. We know that, both, that for Bulgarian and also for other languages, uh, bread is a very important topic.